So what we've been doing for years is talking about, we basically go through the most important picture elements to the human eye that make up a picture. And we talk about that, we show you test material on each of the categories, and we'll follow up the test material with Blu-ray movie material that's appropriate for what we're talking about. Um, we've now kind of condensed it down into three categories. In descending order of importance, they are contrast ratio, which should really come to no surprise if you've ever picked up a TV manufacturer's specification sheet. It's like got 50 point type on it. It's a million to one, it's two million to one, whatever the number is that they're putting out there. Um, so contrast ratio, number one, um, mainly really it's, it, there's two elements that, that get you your contrast ratio, and they're black and they're white. And the black is probably more important than the white. Um, the object was to get 40 foot limits of peak light output out of all the displays. That didn't happen with all of them. The two Panasonics fell a little bit short of that. Uh, VT60 was 35, ZT was 30. Every other display reached 40 with no problem. Um, so those two displays will look a little bit uh, dimmer perhaps as we go through it. The second category is color accuracy. And that there are several elements to that. Uh, color decoding, which is, governs how much color saturation, how much color you can have in the picture. Accurate color decoding, which um, that's one element. The second one is grayscale tracking. How well does it track the grayscale? Because the color of black and white is extremely important in the color system. If it's off, your color fidelity will be incorrect. Um, and then finally, color space. All the six colors that our system are made of. The primary colors, red, green, and blue. Secondary colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Um, today, most all of these televisions have pretty sophisticated color management systems in, in them so that we can fine tune that color space if necessary. Um, so we'll go through that. I'm gonna, uh, Dwayne is kind of gonna <coughs> head that off and we'll all talk about um, those three different elements of that. And then the last section will be um, video processing and, and resolution both static resolution and motion resolution. Deinterlacing 1080i, how well does it do that? How well does it handle 24p if you're in a uh, 24p uh, multiple, like 96 hertz on the plasmas, for example? Um, so those are the three main categories. I'll kick off contrast ratio. We'll start that now. Um, you see a checkerboard pattern on all the panels around the room. That's what we use to measure it. It's an ANSI 4x4 checkerboard. Uh, the method that we're using, we've been using it for a couple of years, is what I call on-screen ANSI, which is to have a, a meter light decline just right up on the squares. You measure all eight squares and all white squares, and then you average those and divide. Um, clearly, how good the black <laughs> level has a huge <coughs> importance in, in the number that gets, uh, that the display device achieves. Um, so let's start off by looking at black. We're going to show you um, a black level test pattern from WOW that will show you that all of the displays have been set correctly. We need to first get all of our lights off. We need that light off also. And uh, it's not quite dark enough. <coughs> Maybe, why don't we start with the white um, yeah, because off it's not, the it's not, Yeah, it's not quite dark Not quite dark enough. enough. We'll look at some more white. And one thing I would like to point out when it comes to ANSI contrast, it kind of favors more LCDs than it does plasma. And the reason why I'm going to bring this up is because with a checkerboard ANSI pattern, it is not really a 100% true representation of a plasma dynamic range capability. The reason for that is because it will trigger the AVL circuit on a, on a plasma. So, um, for instance, this Samsung is calibrated to 40 foot Lamberts as, as far as its peak light output. However, on the ANSI contrast pattern, the, the, the white actually <coughs> would measure about 23 foot Lamberts. And that's because the ABL circuit is kicking in. So, everybody know what ABL circuit is in plasma? <coughs> Automatic brightness limiter. limiter. Okay. It basically ensures that it doesn't overdrive the pixels, 
meltdown, nuclear meltdown, et cetera, et cetera. Blow the power supply. Exactly. You know, keep your, your house. Keep, yeah, exactly. Keep your electric bill really low. Also, oh, so but actually, it started with CRT. Yes, exactly. It's all CRT. Yes. Have this so that yes. If you have a full white screen, they're going to turn down the luminance. Exactly. That saves power and to, to Great to point power. because people think that plasmas originated the ABL. No, they've been with us since CRTs, and we just forgot about it because of <laughs> LCDs. And OLED will probably have an ABL yes. also. They, yes, really? they will. Yes, they will. Absolutely. So keep that in mind when you when you're grading these the, these plasmas when it comes to that checkerboard pattern. So, so sort of the point is he's making is that the checkerboard has 50 percent of the pixels on. That's right. A, you know, a, 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 that's not realistic of television signals. Most exactly. of them average only let's say 15 percent. Right. Or something. Like yes. That. Basically, this ANSI contrast pattern that you see would be an uh, an Apple commercial. How many of you watch Apple commercials all day long, every day? I'm sure there's someone. <laughs> That's what it would e equate to. So when looking at this contrast and when truly looking at the numbers, you have to look at both on-off and ANSI to really get a feel for how dynamic these displays can be. And in general, when you do it that way, plasma will always have more contrast than the LCDs, except for the ones that turn off. <laughs> <laughs> we the also light. found that we the have a way to trick that. Though, yes. That with the oh, checkerboard yeah. pattern in the Panasonic LCD, it sees the black squares <coughs> and gives the whites too. So yes. It's not just the plasma thing. There's similar. Well, yes, exactly. Yeah, this is new. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is a new feature for 2013 when it comes to LED LCD. Okay. All right, so what you're looking at up here is a, a dynamic high test pattern off of Spears and Munsell. Um, Take a look at how far, you may have to get up to do this, how far out we're going. Video, we work at 16,235, but um, this is very subtle, but to go beyond 235 for white and below 16 for black is actually desirable. Um, because in the transfer process, when a display is converting a component signal to an RGB signal, sometimes it gets a little bit of detail up above 235 and rarely below black as well. It can, I mean, this is a very subtle thing, but a little extra dynamic range. Um, I personally like to set panels and, and projectors and display devices with, uh, that go well beyond 235. Uh, so take a look at the panels in the room that can do that. Most of them can do it. Um, the Panasonics are coming out to, where are we? They're up at 244, 245, which is Totally respectable. Samsung's all the way out to 254. Uh, Sony, same, 253, 254. Um, IPS panel up here is limited pretty severely. Does the color shift have, where does that come from? Uh, That's coming from dynamic circuitry and also ABL. But there's also a bug with the current uh, Samsung 10 point. Uh, well, yeah, in fact, we couldn't get red perfect. We couldn't get the uh, grayscale tracking perfect at the very high end. So there's a little bit of pink in those whites. There's a little bit too much red. Yeah. And we imagine we'll be on that pretty soon. But yeah, in general, cool. even on the Samsungs, even if that was working, they do tend to go red, whereas with the Panasonics, they tend to go green or green blue. Mm -hmm. It's but just. The, and then, but the white balance doesn't quite jive with it. Right, because right. of the plasma display, the uh, actual grayscale tracking drifts a bit depending on the, the APL, the average picture level. So we can calibrate these with test windows and they'll give us completely flat grayscale tracking, completely perfect uh, RGB mixing. But in practice, if you, you maybe are measure with a bigger window, you'll get slightly different results. So exactly. that's part of it too. Yeah. How many window do you guys typically use when you calibrate? Depends on the panel. Oh, yeah. No, well, plasma, for example, 65 well, it, plasma. Yeah, it would depend on the panel itself. So, for instance, for the Panasonics, I would recommend you use it uh, more than just a standard window pattern, which, depending on your pattern generator, can be anywhere from 10% to 18%. Um, you can that, than that. Yes, and you should. There are some also, I know a lot of um, individuals on the internet are now looking at using 20% uh, APL patterns, 22% APL patterns, as, as they um, kind of more are indicative of actual regular content. However, 
I don't 100% agree with that because yes, it's an average, but I mean, it's just that an average. I don't like averages because it's, it's an average, you know, it's not consistent. So that's still up to play, but I mean, I have a personal technique to do this, but I would, I will definitely say that um, do not use just your standard patterns and just let it go like that. Um, with, the, with the Samsungs, um, you probably will be better using the actual um, APL patterns <coughs> to calibrate it. Um, with the LED LCDs, full screen, full screen patterns. So, especially if it's local dimming. Yeah, I'm trying to understand why this test is important. Okay, to me, it, it uh, it's a matter of just sort of arbitrary design. You know, the, the spec is 235, and yeah, it's nice to have a little bit more. But if we go too far over, then we lose some of our, our range. If, if you go too to, far, you lose dynamic you range. You lose dynamic right. range. Exactly right. and, and the other thing is, is that your eye has a hard time seeing a lot of this stuff, okay, at the high levels. At the low levels, you know, it's really easy mm -hmm. to see because the contrast ratio is so high. But here, the contrast ratio, if you didn't have those edges, you'd have a hard time seeing it. Maybe it's a sine wave or something. You'd have yeah. a hard time right, seeing right, right. this and, and not even know that it's... Well, I think it's a great point. I mean, if you have a, a light output uh, linear display device, then you don't do that. Yeah, right. You bring it down. Right. You, you yeah. wouldn't let it go out that high because you'd lose too much light output. And most projectors come set that way, right? Most projectors are clipping the white and white for that reason. I don't know if I, a lot of the yeah, ones that say 235. Right. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, they, yeah, and they, most of them actually have uh, different settings. Like yes, you can change it. For you can it. In general, it, you can say it's okay if your display can only do 235. However, there is content, real actual yes. yeah. content in the high frequency or the high dynamic, dynamic yes. range on some Blu-rays, but it's only up to about 240. Right. Okay. Anything go. beyond 240 is just really junk. But your eyes can going to have a hard time seeing it. Right, right. And, and it's so quick. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's so quick. It's, it's an overshoot. Yeah, right. Right. exactly. Right. When I code for Blu-ray, it's really 240 is the max. And I think anything above that, what you're saying, it's quantization. Yes. yes. It's junk. Right? Yes. Okay, so, so, so since it's so unimportant, <laughs> let's move on to uh, black. And actually, we're going to show you a different black pattern than we've been using, uh, that we used last night. Um, it's actually off the WOW disc, a Disney um, consumer test disc, which is actually extremely sophisticated, uh, considering it was intended for the consumer market. Um, it's got some really sophisticated test material. Now, Robert did mention the, uh, a little bit about the signal flow. Uh, let me just say that again real quick. We are... Our source material, the Blu-ray players, are OPPO BD93 players. Uh, they have dual HDMI outputs, right? So uh, in the interest of keeping the video path as clean as possible, we're sending the video out directly into a key digital matrix switcher, which then outputs to all the display devices. The other output we're using for the audio, which we will use later when we're looking at uh, Blu-ray material is going into the AVR. So we're keeping the video from going through two different boxes before it gets to the display. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, so what we're seeing here is a Pooj pattern. I personally love this pattern because it's really, really easy to use. Essentially what you want to see, this is ideal black right here. This is 16, you know, if you're into RGB. This is 16 right here. Then we have 1% 1 1 above black. Barely see that. Yep, 3%, 5%, 2%. So 1% should be barely, and I mean barely visible, if you have your black, your brightness control on these panels set up correctly. And with this, this is barely visible. Let's take one camera. up too high and show them how it's, what it's wrong. Right. This is wrong, of course, this is really, Notice that you see zero. Yes. That exactly. you definitely do not want to <laughs> see. Keep on going up, you'll start to see below black populate. So that means that it's too bright. And at the same time, if you take it too low. Not you, too bright, but black level too yeah. high. You, you, you're losing 1%, 3%, 5%. I still so run into call people. crushing blacks, basically. There you go. I still run into people that mistake the brightness control because I think actually it's, it's misnamed. It should be named black level. 
Right. Because yeah. brightness controls on TVs controls black, not how bright the picture is. Contrast is what helps with the right. light out. So, all right, yeah, that's a great pattern. Now, another great thing I like about this pattern when it comes to plasma is you can actually get right up on it and actually see how well it, um, the dithering and the um, gradations work on it. So, for instance, on the Panasonics, I can see the dither in it, but compared to the Samsung here, Samsung has more dither. A little louder. A little louder. It's so basically more noise. There's more noise, right? Yes. Um, if we look over here at the old Coro here, get right up on it, there's no, that, there's very little dither noise that you can possibly see right there. You guys will have to come up to see it because, again, being that these, this is barely above black, you have to really get up on it to see it. But That's a good point, though, too, is you have to get on any of these. You have to get your nose practically right. on the screen to see it. So if you're at the seating distance, how important is it? Right. Probably not that important. That's what a lot of mastering stuff normally don't even start out at 16. They actually probably try to start out at 17 and go up because they of that. To minimize it. Yeah. Is that processing the, the, the noise in this black? Well, it's related to how the plasma display is driven. Right, because if you look in the LCD, it's going yes. to be completely, completely clean. And the other thing I think is important here, this is a very good one for seeing the viewing angle dependence of the background on the LCDs. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, in fact, you, you know, if I look at this one, it looks very good, and I can't see the star, but if I get over here now, I can see this one. Percent. And of course, now the background is much brighter. So depending on where you are in the room, and what angle you are to these LCDs. Uh, that IPS is, uh, at my angle, is I'm not doing too well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, sure. yeah. at any angle, it's not doing too well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I love it. <laughs> I have a question. Why does it keep flashing on? What's it's to help you see it when you're setting it. Yeah, yeah. and also to, um, plasma is to not have image retention. Kind of a cool effect, too. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> it's a really cool sure. disc, and there's some great eye candy on it. Some good Disney footage is on here that looks spectacular. It was very, very well done. Um, all right, so now, why don't we look at a movie that's well, really the, dark. For the LCDs, and then, do we need to move around a little bit? Uh, yeah, if yes. you want to get a good handle on it, you do. So take, yes. go, take, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead and take the time. We'll do that. Yeah. We'll finish this with a really dark scene from uh, Dark Knight Rises. It's a long one, too. It's about six minutes. Get a, get a nice. Um, and then we're going to segue into uh, color, um, which is really uh, several different things. So color decoding for the amount of color in the picture, saturation, then uh, overall color accuracy, which encompasses uh, grayscale tracking, color space accuracy, um, and Dwayne is going to is going to lead off on that one, and we'll all kind of jump in and, and discuss it as we go.